In this video, I'm going to be reviewing the Yakima two-timer rack. This is a hitch mount rack that holds two bikes, retails for about $300. This rack replaces my performance transit flatbed rack, which was also a two bike rack. And if you go back and watch the review on that, the latest one I did, you'll see why I'm replacing it. Now this one is a much higher quality rack than the performance. I went with this one over the holdup for a few reasons. And when I do this video, I'm gonna do some comparison with the two timer and the holdup because I've owned, uh, I owned the holdup several years ago, and now I have the two-timer. Uh, one of the main reasons I went with this over the holdup is because this one can go between a vehicle with a two-inch hitch receiver and an inch and a quarter. It has an adapter. Uh, I have a, our family SUV is a two-inch hitch receiver in my Accord, which the rack stays on most of the time, has an inch and a quarter. So it's nice to be able to switch back and forth. Also, this rack actually sits a little bit higher than the hold up just a few inches but uh, i melted a carbon wheel on my previous rack and so i'm getting a rack that sits the bike up higher and so that's another reason i went with this one also the two timer is about 10 pounds lighter than the hold up so over the years that's going to save a little bit of gas going back and forth i keep the rack on my vehicle all the time i rarely ever take it off so nice to have a rack that's a little bit lighter that saves gas so let me show the features of this rack as we get more into the review i'll start by showing the rack folded up because this is one of my favorite features of this rack and the hold up does the same thing you can fold it up this is really useful if you need to pull your car into the garage and maybe your car barely fits with the rack on it to close the garage door so you don't have to take your rack off so these pens operate really smoothly. So you would undo that pen, just snaps into place. And also this rack will drop down a little bit more. So if your bikes are on and you have trouble getting the trunk open, you can drop it down a little bit more. And that way you can open the trunk. And then you would bring up the arm that holds the bikes and it's ready to go. Very simple. I'll do that in reverse to show you how quickly the thing folds up on your car. So this is obviously an inch and a quarter receiver. It does have a lock, so it comes with two keys, and you can lock the rack onto the vehicle so no one could just take a wrench and remove the rack and steal your rack and worse, your bikes with the rack. Now this is the adapter, and it's very easy to put on. So if you're switching to another vehicle with a two inch hitch receiver, it's just got one little Allen screw that holds it onto the rack and you would just slide that sleeve onto the rack and put it on a vehicle with a two inch hitch receiver. Like most Yakima racks, you have the bottle opener. So your post ride beverage is easy to open. Really cool little feature that Yakima puts on these racks. So these are the arms that hold the bikes on and I'll load up my bike here in a minute to show you how easy it goes on. These operate very, very smoothly. Uh, much smoother than the performance rack that I had. Almost too smooth because they will fall down pretty easily sometimes, but even when you don't want them to. But very easy to operate, just pushing the red button and they slide down and will not go up until you put in, push in the button. These wheel trays I think are designed really well. So they're kind of deep for cross bikes or road bikes and then they are wider and you I don't have a fat bike but you could at least put a plus bike in here with no problem and probably a fat bike as well the retention straps for the wheel operate really really smoothly they slide in there nicely uh, much better than the velcro straps I had on my previous rack and they have this little groove that you may not be able to see in the video but it holds the strap open so it's very easy to get a bike in and out the trays also slide really smoothly and again sorry to do so many comparisons to my previous rack but the quality on this rack is excellent because uh, my previous rack was very difficult uh, a couple of these to slide and one of my favorite features and i'll show this when i put a bike on but one of my favorite features of this rack is how you can move bikes around so they don't touch so handlebars don't touch saddles of the other bike so you would slide that where you want it and then tighten that up and it's very quick. If your vehicle has a hatchback, you can simply drop that down, it locks, and that way you can open your hatch pretty easily. Bikes will load on this rack really quickly. Now I already have the wheel trays adjusted for the wheelbase, 
I carry my cross and my gravel bike on the outside and my mountain bike on the inside. So I have the trays adjusted. So all you would do is pick this up, slide down the locking arm, and then you would do your wheel straps. And you don't need to do these very tight, I've found, just as long as they touch the rim. That way the bike doesn't buck up if you were to hit, uh, hit a big bump on the road. And then do the front as well. All right, it's on, ready to go. One thing that I feel is missing on this rack is the ability to lock the bike. Now I keep a bike lock, you can keep a U-lock and a cable in your trunk. So you have to get that separately. One thing that I do miss actually about my performance transit rack was the fact that you could lock these arms and that way if you had to run into the store, your bike is secure. On this one again, you'd have to maybe take a U-lock, put it down there on the bottom of the rack and lock the bike on. So that's one thing I really wish this had and the holdup does have a, an ability to lock. It has a cable lock that comes out of the arm that goes over the wheel. So again, that's a feature that I, I kind of wish Yakima would put on this rack. I have loaded my wife's mountain bike to show what two bikes look like on this rack. And a couple tips here. Yakima recommends putting the heavier bike on the inside, which makes sense. But the real priority comes with the bike with the lower top tube. So put the lower top tube bike on first and then on the outside the bike with a higher top tube because if you don't, this hook would not go all the way down. So if this inside bike had the higher top tube and this one had a low top tube, you couldn't get this hook all the way down. So that's why you need, need to put the sloping, the low sloping top tube on the inside. Another tip is I use frame saver tape just in case. These hooks have pretty good padding. It's not real plush, but it does seem pretty durable. But I always put frame saver tape on here because this is the only part of the rack that will touch the bike. Now that is one thing nice about the hold up rack is the fact that it really just touches the tire. It doesn't touch the frame unless it were to slip over here on the fork. Now while I'm mentioning that with the hold up, I had an issue with the hold up uh, with a 29er. This was several years ago. They've probably updated it since then. But the older hold up that I had, I put a 29er with a 2.35 front tire and it, the tire was so big that the arm had trouble holding the bike on and it would rock out of the tray. So I'd go around a corner and the bike would be rocking off the rack. They've probably updated that since then, but this is one thing that I really love about the two-timer. I just feel this rack is more secure. These bikes are completely solid on there. You've got three points of securing the bike. So two uh, straps on the wheel and then this over the frame. Another thing that I like about this is if you were to have a bike with fender, so especially a front fender, the holdup wouldn't work. You would want to get the two-timer so that you could uh, put a bike with a front fender on. I had mentioned before how adjustable this rack is for different bikes. So these trays, you can really slide them back and forth so that no component from the bikes touch each other so you can see how much distance I have here. Now my wife's mountain bike has a shorter top tube but my mountain bike the handlebars sit out quite a bit further so I have a good inch clearance here or more. Uh, but if I wanted to, so if I, if I didn't like how close this was to the saddle I would probably adjust this one because if this rocks it could rub the saddle and on a long trip that would cause the saddle to probably get a little tear in it or mark it up. So what I could do is very easily just slide these trays. So I would slide this one this way and then I would slide the rear one to match the wheelbase. Now you'll see this is another tip. I have a piece of tape here. So if I were to put two uh, cross bikes, so I have a, a cross and a gravel. So if I were to carry both of those, I would just slide this tray. So I have it marked with a piece of electrical tape. So it's really easy, easy for me to adjust that tray and slide it forward. So again, that's one thing I really like about the two timer is how you can really just slide the bikes any direction. Now the new hold up racks do allow the trays to move. So you can take, uh, it's just got a bolt here and you could slide the the trays 
Now, I, the holdup that I had didn't have that feature, and I had my mountain bikes. If I were to carry two mountain bikes, they would touch. So the bars would touch the saddle, and I did not like that. You get, I think, about two inches each way on the new holdup. Uh, so if you had a bar hitting in the middle of the saddle, I don't think you could adjust the holdup far enough to get the bike separated so they don't touch. Now, if you have a holdup, leave a comment below uh, if that's the case. But just looking online at the pictures of the holdup, it didn't seem like you could have such a huge amount of adjustment on those racks like you can have on the two-timer. On one of my rack reviews, a viewer had made a comment about the brake lights not being able to be seen from the back. So I've got both bikes on, and you can see that when the brake lights come on, that you can see the third brake light. So if I were a car behind me, you can see the third light and the ones on the side. So I don't think that's really an issue. You can see them through the spoke and again through the frames of the bike. Uh, so the brakes, brake lights show up really well. So I just wanted to throw that in there uh, in case anybody was wondering how visible brake lights are from the back. The last thing that I want to show is how high this sits up in relation to my exhaust. So for those of you who watched my review on the Performance Transit and listened to the story about my carbon wheel melting, that sits a, a pretty good distance. So the exhaust coming straight out is not going to hit the wheel. And if you have an exhaust that goes to the side, that's not an issue. It's when your, uh, your hitch receiver in relation to the exhaust sits kind of low. Uh, if you carry bikes with carbon wheels, you really got to make sure that that exhaust won't hit. So that's a pretty good uh, distance away. And also the rack does sit a little bit further away from the car. In other words, the bikes are further away from the car. So that's another plus. So I won't repeat that nightmare of an issue of a $1,000 carbon wheel melting on my bike rack. Since I'm doing some comparison with the two-timer and the holdup, let me mention one more thing. And that is the fact that if you use this rack on a huge variety of bikes, so not only carrying your bikes, but you just carry bikes with different wheelbase sizes from road to cross to mountain, the holdup is going to be quicker to use because you don't have to adjust the wheel trays. On this rack, you do have to get the wheel trays pretty exact for the wheelbase. If you carry the same bike all the time, that's not gonna be an issue. You set the wheel trays and forget it. And like I showed you before, I carry my mountain bike on the inside and my cross and gravel bike on the outside so I know exactly where to put those trays but again uh, if you're carrying a huge variety of bikes all the time then I would recommend the hold up just for the ease of use so you don't have to adjust those wheel trays. I do want to mention that Yakima includes a strap to attach the bikes to each other not something that I've used yet and just carry my bikes to and from work and even to local races I haven't used this if I were to go on a long trip yeah, I'd probably put this on just as peace of mind to know that if a bike came loose, it's still secure. So that's going to wrap up my review of the Yakima two-timer hitch rack. This is a rack that I would really recommend. The quality is excellent. It's worth the investment. It's something that I use five, six days a week. So it's, it's again, definitely worth the $300 you pay for it. Everything works really smoothly on this rack from the hooks that hold the bikes to the wheel trays to the pins that you pull out to fold the rack up it's just a really high quality rack i will follow this up with a long-term review after using this rack for probably a year because this rack will sit on my vehicle all the time it'll endure sun and rain and we'll see how it holds up but judging from the quality so far i think it's going to be just fine if you have any questions or comments leave them below thanks for watching